I, I think that it's it's fundamental to the religion. There's there's a verse in uh, the uh, the chapter known as the B Nahal. I think it's uh, 97th verse, where uh, the, it's uh, the verse says that whoever does g- uh, good deeds, mm-hmm. whether male or female, and is a believer, we will bring them to life in a good life. Mm-hmm. And and it literally says hayatun tayyiba, like a good life. So, and, and but it's God who is bringing that life about, mm-hmm. and and. And so the two, the two fundamental keys to that good life are faith and deeds. Mm-hmm. And, and this is, you know, this was a big debate in Christianity, as you know, justification. Yeah. Um, but and in Islam, interestingly enough, justification is through faith alone, according to the dominant, but deeds are necessary. Mm-hmm. And, and so then, then it comes to what is faith and what are good deeds. Right, right. I think w- one of the things, if for many people now in the West, I think, and, and around the world, I think a good life is associated with a pleasurable life. Mm. And certainly if you go back even to the Greek period, Aristotle's in the, in the Nicomachean Ethics, he talks about the necessary components of a good life. Wealth is one of them, having mm. a, a modicum of wealth that enables you to mm. do what you want. And certainly we, we see that, it gives you a certain type of freedom. And then, and then he talks about friendship, he has a whole chapter on friendship, mm-hmm. which is very interesting because mm-hmm. to have a good life, certainly friends, it would seem, would be included in that. And, and he talks also about virtue and a contemplative life. And I think the 10th chapter to me is the most interesting because it's almost like he doesn't really ever get to what he's mm-hmm. really talking. It's almost as if it's, it's, it's a hidden tradition that he's just hinting at mm-hmm. in there. But I, for, for Muslims, that is the key to a truly good life, is a, a contemplative mm-hmm. life. There has to be meditation on reality. And, 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 that, and that meditation on reality, by nature, is going to engender good deeds. In the Quran, I think it's very clear that circumstances are not necessary. I see. Because, w- uh, for instance, right now in Syria is a good yeah. example yeah. where there's, it's incredibly war-torn despite that fact. Yeah. There are people in the midst of that that are in a, in a state with, of submission. Because we can't determine our circumstances, but yeah. we can determine our responses to our circumstances. And, and I think that is the essential meaning. If you really truly believe, no matter what God throws at you, like Job, you know, Ayyub mm-hmm. in the Quran, no matter what God throws at you, mm-hmm. you do not question God. And, and this, for the Muslim, this is absolutely essential. The, the verse in the Quran that says, God will not be asked about what he does, but you will be asked about what you do. And I think this might be a fundamental difference, certainly with the Jewish tradition mm-hmm. and the Islamic tradition, is that, that submission really is a submission. It's not to say that, you know, uh, that God, um, that we can't in our in ourselves ask questions. Mm-hmm. It's 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 not that, but it's a type of submission mm. to whatever God throws at me. My my response is what I'm going to be asked about. I think there's definitely uh, a relationship between Islam and Stoicism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are people that have argued that Muslims took things from the Stoics. Mm-hmm. I I I don't think. Uh, that's a sound historical argument, but Mm -hmm. I I think the Stoics, it's interesting to me that the Stoics, the two great philosophers of Stoicism, um, one of them was a slave and the other was an emperor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and I I just find that very intriguing, that it like that, that the circumstance, you do not, we did, I didn't choose the family I came into. Um, My family was highly educated, Mm -hmm. so that enabled me, for instance, my language skills are just going to be naturally better because I grew up listening to articulate parents. Um, I didn't choose those. Yeah. So each one of us gets circumstances that we're given. But what we do with those circumstances, this is what is going to determine the, the merit or the medal of our character. Faith or I think what, you're absolutely right that, that we are challenged and really in, 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 in quite literally commanded by God mm-hmm. 
to exert our efforts in bringing about circumstances that are going to make the good life possible. Mm. And, and certainly Medina is an example of that. Mecca was persecution. Mm -hmm. The Prophet fled, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fled to Medina and set up an environment. The mm. first thing he did was he established a free market. Mm. And what's interesting about Islam to me is it's the last economic religion. I mean, we know that in early Christianity, one of the major debates in early Christianity was about faith and wealth. Mm -hmm. And yet I rarely hear Christians talking about, for instance, usury, despite the fact that it was considered a mortal sin. I All mean, the way the, the, until the 19th century. century. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Like you went to hell and they wouldn't even bury uh, usurers in Christian cemeteries. Right, right. Usury is still a very vital element in Islam. I mean, very devout Muslims will not buy houses in America because they won't take the mortgages um, to do that. So people take that very seriously. They're very afraid of in any way violating certain aspects of, of uh, commercial law in yeah. Islam. And, and commercial law is probably one third of the Sharia is, oh, is about commercial law. Yeah. Well, well the, the the debates about usury in, in Christianity, um, I mean, that they're originally they're motivated that every time you uh, require interest, uh, you put the person who has borrowed from you deeper into I, into a hole, in many respects, and so to protect, um, it, I, I think it's a, it, it was exactly and still continues to be well, in that regard. Exploitation of yeah. people, also poor people, and even Calvin. If you look at when when. And, and the bankers actually erected a, a monument to Calvin in uh, Geneva, I think. Mm. <laughs> but but when, when you yeah. look, even Calvin, he only allowed uh, usury, what he called interest, with people that, that could afford it. And, but and, and with, that could be productive. Rather and, it was, than and he put a cap, I think, on 3%. It was, it was that, very yeah. small. I think it's a very important discussion in general to have today, given the, the levels of debt in... Uh, all over the world. All over the world. And debt is a form of slavery, indentured yeah. servitude. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, even in the United States, I mean, debtors' prisons yeah. were very common in, yeah. in the West. And especially poor suffer and disproportionately high. Uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. payday loans. Which, uh, which the banks often, like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, these banks have payday loan. They also cater to that, that uh, element. So, I mean, for me, I, I really feel like one of the fundamental uh, rights of children is to be born debt free. Yeah. And, and you cannot, um, we're $16 trillion in debt in the United States. I don't see how a good life can be sustained in this country because eventually, that debt is going to fall due. Yeah, yeah. And, and every, if you read, uh, for instance, Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, that last chapter on public debt, yeah. no civilization has survived uh, a public debt. And, and, you know, the other thing about a good life for me is entertainment. Mm, mm. Because I, I really feel w one, one of the humans love to be entertained. And, and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was once saw some, some people going to a wedding and he said, is there entertainment? Mm. And, and so what's called lehu. Yeah. And, and, and we need respite from the world, right, right. Um, both spiritual respite, but also just pleasurable respite from the world. And that's why singing was so important in, in, uh, in most religious traditions. Yeah, like the yeah. Sufis put a lot of emphasis on singing, right. well, in shad, what yeah, they call yeah, in shad. Yeah. Um, and, and that, w one of the things that I find increasingly difficult for people in this country is the degrading nature of our entertainment culture. And I, I think one of the most important things to live a good life for me is human dignity mm. and, and just see who we are. We're not animals. You know, I hear a lot of people say this interesting thing, we're just animals. You know, there's a lot of people that make that claim. Yeah, just is the problem in this, in this phrase. Exactly. <laughs> we are part animal, yeah. but we have something that clearly distinguishes us, not in, in, in kind, yeah. but, but, but actually in the genus. You know, we, 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 are, we, are, we have an immaterial component. And mm. despite whatever neurologists and neuroscientists say, Nobody has pinpointed consciousness. 
and 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 that is simply a fact it is is a biological fact nobody can pinpoint consciousness we know that there's mechanisms that enable consciousness but consciousness itself is an immaterial reality and therefore we we are you know the highly morphic if you want to use aristotelian terms we're body and soul yeah. and and one of the things that nasuddin atusi in his book on ethics says is when he, he he says first let us establish the uh, the existence of the soul and he said this is a, not a debatable point because even the drunkard in his drunkenness even the sleeper in his sleeping is aware of himself 